it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new episode of the Road to Glory Career Mode with Ferenc Varos. We are in the Premier League and this will be a banger of this episode. We play Chelsea, Man City and Manchester United in this episode. So strap in and enjoy this series and make sure to leave a like. So we start off our first game against Chelsea. We are playing our strongest possible lineup. So this will be a huge test. Our cameras on one man. On the back of a hat trick, will he continue to excel? But of course, we will try to play on the front foot, attacking football. We are not afraid of even the big teams. And Gallagher gets the ball, passes it to Pulisic, and Gulachi has to make the first save. And there weren't uh, many chances in the first half. That's the only chance that I could show you. And Lukaku gets the ball. Gallagher drags his shot wide. And our first chance came in the middle of the second half. Lonkar gets the ball. And his long range strike is saved by Kepa and then what a crossfield ball by the Chelsea player absolutely incredible and then Lukaku holds the ball up he passes it to Hakim Ziyech but Gulachi with a big save but then Chelsea from the corner clear it and oh my goodness have you ever seen a more ridiculous goal than that Pulisic on the volley and his volley it hits the defender and then Lukaku the deflected shot is smashed in by Lukaku. He has the reflexes of Spider-Man apparently. That was one of the most unrealistic goals that I've ever seen. And then Tokmak, my favorite player, he is our mini Ronaldinho as I like to call him, has a long range strike. And then Santo who came on as a substitute, he's a young right winger. He has a big chance but it just lacks the power and it was a comfortable save and in the end we can't really complain about uh, losing because we only had three shots Chelsea had seven but we had a pretty close expected goals that Lukaku goal was just ridiculous and this is how the league table looks like. We are still in third place, but the league got a lot more congested. Let's try and push as much as possible. And our main aim now has changed. We don't only want to finish in the top 10. We want European football because the way we started this league season, that should be our aim. And our next game is at Goodison Park against Everton. And we don't really change our strongest lineup against uh, the more stronger teams. And Everton away is always a tough ground to go to but as a Liverpool fan I'm extra motivated to do well against Everton. Ryan Maia gets the ball from Gavridge, Gavridge gets it back then he gets it back the second time this is a really good passing move and Gavridge has a chance but he shoots wide. He was I think the only change from the Chelsea game and Everton had a free kick which was uh, wide of the target and then we slide in to intercept the pass and Gavridge finds Uzuni who goes through and Uzuni scores! We are 1 0 up at Goodison Park, and Uzuni does the funniest celebration. What is that? <laughs> Brilliant first touch past the defender, and then Uzuni has the finish. Boy, did we need Uzuni to score a goal in the Premier League. In the second half, Everton come with Sigankov, their right winger. He passes it to Savanier, to Calvert Ruin, of course, their main striker, their number nine, their best finisher, and he goes out to Rafa Benitez to celebrate uh, it is a really good passing move and a deadly finish but we weren't done yet Tokmak gets the ball and look at how fast he is he outpaces uh, Keane and then he finds uh, Gavric but Pickford saves it what a brilliant attack this was such an end-to-end -end game and Richard Lisson's shot is saved by Gulachi but then Everton came back and Richard Lisson in the 84th minute this time he buries it. Oh man, this was such an end-to-end -end game in the second half, but it's Everton who take the lead and in the end they manage to see us off and win the game. So back-to-back -back losses in the Premier League against two tough opponents uh, and we, this is a reality check that we have a long, long way to go until we can match these really top teams but we are still in the top four on goal difference but we need to pick up some points we need to hold the momentum of this uh, losing streak at the moment this is uh, the first time
time in the series, I think, where we lost two games in a row. And West Ham, incredibly, are in the relegation zone. And here are the top scorers, the top assists and the top clean sheets in the league. Playing against Norwich City is a really welcome side. We are playing our second team, but Gavrich keeps his place in the second team and uh, we really need to beat Norwich City. I think we are good enough uh, to beat them. We have a better team, a better squad than Norwich. And Baturina finds Zakaria Sen, but from a very tight angle, the goalkeeper saves it. And Norwich had a chance. They weren't uh, just uh, holding their hands up and not doing anything. Nizuli, our backup goalkeeper, with a little bit of an unconvincing save. And what is that challenge? Andras Schaefer was taken out by Matthias Norman and the referee, without any hesitation, pulls out the red card. Farke, the Norwich manager, is absolutely furious. furious. And then Baturino finds Santo and the referee was with us in this game. After the red card, Norwich get a penalty as well. So the Norwich players were fuming, but Gavrich's penalty was saved. I'm holding my head in my hands just like Gavrich. What an opportunity for Gavrich to score in back-to-back -back games, but Baturina goes through and he buries it! 10 men Norwich can't keep a clean sheet against us and Baturina, our third choice striker, but because Boli is out for three months, he's now our second choice striker. That's his third goal in four games, so he really loves playing uh, in this second team, but then Norwich had a chance, which thankfully they blazed over the bar and Gavrich, who was really motivated to make up for his penalty miss. He finds Baturina, but his shot is straight at the goalkeeper McGovern, who makes a decent save. And then Kish finds Gavrich. Gavrich was spraying balls brilliantly, and what a pass to Kish by Baturina. Kish stops down the ball. His first pass is intercepted, and then he finds Zakarias, and great shimmy, and Zakariasen's shot is saved, and then the cross doesn't find anyone. So this is still 1-0, and Norwich has a chance, and Nitzule, what a huge save by our backup goalkeeper, and then Besha clears it, and we hold on. Even though Norwich were down to 10 men, they really gave us a tough time, but we managed to hold on to a 1-0 win. This is a vital victory. We are now in fifth place, but as you can see, the, the Premier League is so tight, so congested. We need to beat the smaller sides and we need to hope that sometimes we can take points off the big teams. And our next game will be a big test as well. West Ham at uh, the London Stadium. And oh my goodness, Mai couldn't get the ball past the goalkeeper, but that was really, really close. And Karsdorp gets the ball. We were playing our first team again against West Ham United because they are really, really strong, especially at home. And Coventry, I don't really know who he is, but he has almost scored. Lydony, our defensive midfielder, gets the ball. He passes it to Tokmak. Can he finish? Oh, his finish is straight at Fabianski. So this was a really cagey game so far. It's near near. But Mae, our Premier League top scorer with four goals, gets the ball. And Uzuni, can he score again? Yes! Just like against Everton, Uzuni scores at another tough away ground. It's uh, the, the lead for Ferenc Varos. Uzuni smashes it home into the top corner and it's already his third goal in five matches. And before this episode, he only had one goal all season and now he has three. Brilliant by Uzuni, and, but Vingo needs to get back. Lanzini passes it to Antonio, but his shot is saved by Gulacci. Gulacci has been really, really crucial in our season. He's saving us so many times. And Blažić finds Uzuni, who is playing with so much confidence. He has the pace to outrun the defender and Fabianski with a huge error. Uzuni, four goals in five matches. What a start to life in the Premier League, but Fabianski really should hold his head in shame. That was a dreadful goalkeeping error. You should never concede that shot at the near post. But West Ham came really roaring back and Vlasic 
scores a pretty nice goal, I have to say, but Gulacci is really mad at the defenders, but he should be probably maybe saving it because Vlasic's shot is not very powerful, but it's accurate, it's in the corner. And then 85th minute, what on earth is Gulacci doing? Oh, that was such a calamity at the back. We almost gifted West Ham the equalizer, but thankfully Gulacci makes up for his error by a big save. But then look at this, 91st minute, West Ham are really pushing and thankfully we could defend that. So we win the game, really, really big victory, 2-1. And West Ham were the better team, they had 3.8 XG, they had 10 shots, we only had 5, but both teams had 4 shots on target, Uzuni was the man of the match. And we keep our 4th place, absolutely amazing. We are beating the teams that we are on par with, the 4 star and Baturino has agreed the 2 year loan move to Hetafe. He, he's our backup striker, but he felt really slow and sluggish. So we felt he, loaning him out in January when Boli is back would be beneficial to all parties and hopefully he can grow and develop and become a little bit quicker and more agile on loan. And we got knocked out in the League Cup. So here is how the quarterfinals shape up. There will be a Manchester derby and our biggest test after the Liverpool game, Manchester City at the Groupama Arena, our home stadium. This is going to be a huge, huge opportunity to really show the world what we can do against one of the best teams in the world. Ryan Sterling gets the ball and Lautaro Martinez with a tame finish. We got very lucky that he didn't score that. But Ryan Sterling, brilliant skill. And De Bruyne and his shot is saved by Gulacci. But it was all Man City in the first half. Our first opportunity came in the 41st minute when Laiduni wins the header. Tokma gets the ball and what a goal! Tokma against Manchester City, our first chance. I was just uh, saying to myself, the Man City team will close me down, so let's just hit it, let's have a bang and let's see what happens. Tokma chests it down and what a half volley. Absolutely glorious, probably the best goal of season two so far and Tokmak, that's his first goal in the Premier League. What a time to get your first goal against the big Manchester City side, but they were turning on the style and De Bruyne passes it to Ferran Torres and that is one of the best passing moves that you will see all season. Manchester City completely outpassed and outclassed us and Lautaro Martinez with that brilliant Lewandowski celebration, but that is his easiest goal that he will score and Man City were not done yet. Phil Foden with some tricky shimmies, I just with the big uh, defender Salai couldn't get close to him but De Bruyne's shot is saved by Gulacci and then we couldn't really even tackle the Man City players. It was all Man City in the, for, in the second half. It was hands on deck for us. We tried to, to defend like crazy, but we needed Gulacci to save us time and time again. But their domination counted and Lautaro Martinez gets his brace and he runs out to celebrate with Pep Guardiola. Absolutely incredible uh, how Man City performed in the second half. We even tried a bicycle kick clearance, which we failed, and Uzuni fails to clear it off the line. And it's an Uzuni own goal, that's a little bit harsh on Martinez, not getting uh, his goal, but look at that, 0.1 XG. We had one shot all game that went in. So the scoreline is actually flattering to us. Man City battered us in the second half. And we slipped down to sixth place. And to be honest, that was expected. I didn't expect us to hold on to top four for too long. So we play Southampton, can we bounce back? And Bolly is back from his injury and we are playing a somewhat mixed team. It's mainly our second team because uh, we have uh, Manchester United after this game. So we rested the first team for that big Man United game. But Southampton at the St. Mary's is not an easy ground, but we need to develop the young players. That's why we are playing the second team so often and, and we really want to grow them. Nitsuli, what are you doing? An absolute howl but Long blocks the shot. He was a free agent at the start of this career mode. That's how we got him. And Nitsuli made up for his uh, error by making a crucial save. And then Nitsuli, can he do it again? Brilliant save by Nitsuli. So even though he had a huge error, thankfully he saved 
a lot of shots and then look at this absolutely incredible Southampton were battering us in the first half it was chance after chance after chance but Nitsuli again our backup keeper has saved absolutely everything and Tokmak really buoyed by the by his uh, goal against Man City crosses it to Bolly but his header is saved and finally in the second half we actually had a couple of chances Botka gets the ball he is the center back and look at the offside trap that Southampton are doing and Tokmark finds Gavrich in the middle and Gavrich scores and we steal the victory potentially if we can hold on to this lead Southampton should have been 3-0 up at half time but Nitsuli saved everything our backup goalkeeper who is of Hungarian origin and we take the lead so undeserved Gavrich even had the composure to take it down that's his second goal of the season and Southampton were really mad with this injustice but in the 91st minute with a shoot over the bar and look at this they had 14 shots expected goals of four eight shots on target yet we keep a clean sheet Nitsuli with the performance of the season look at that eight saves he was the man of the match and he's only 72 rated so I told you guys we need to play the second team so they can show us what they can do and we move up to fifth place absolutely brilliant uh, first part of the Premier League season but we play Man United next and Andras Schaefer, our backup defensive midfielder, has broken his toe, so he will be out for three months. That is really, really devastating. And now we play Manchester United. We play our first team, our best possible lineup against Sancho, Rashford, Fernandez, Cristiano Ronaldo, and they replaced Maguire with Kim, with Kim Pembe. So they have an incredible team. They have almost as good a team as Liverpool and Man United. I mean, Man City, sorry, in this career mode at least. And Rashford is cooking something. And Ronaldo gets the ball. His shot is blocked. Fernandez's his shot is blocked. But the third shot is an absolutely incredible sequence of events and Jadon Sancho goes out to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer who in this career mode is still the manager of Man United. I would love it if they introduced sackings in manager career mode and that was just uh, unlucky. Jadon Sancho six goals in 14 matches and Man United kept piling on the pressure but then we had a free kick opportunity but Uzuni's free kick is not the best quality and Man United have a corner Gulachi what a save Ronaldo almost scored they are uh, Gulachi keeps us in the game and then Ronaldo hits the post oh my goodness Ronaldo looks really mad it was all Man United in the first half and they high pressed us uh, really uncharacteristic but I ca called the goalkeeper out and Ronaldo shoots over the bar so we are similar Similarly on the back foot, but uh, Laiduni gets the ball. Can he do something? His uh, shot is deflected and De Gea saves it and Laiduni picks up an injury. So after Schaefer we have another defensive midfielder injured. Let's hope it's not a long-term injury. And Bruno Fernandes' shot is straight at Gulachi. So we are still somehow in this game. But Man United kept coming. Van Bissaka to the far post and Jadon Sancho's volley would have been amazing. And uh, now we only have Besic on the bench, who is a 70-rated player. So let's try and freshen the team up. Uh, we didn't have a lot of chances. And then Tokmak gets a ball, but his shot is blocked by the amazing Kim Pembe. And Man United deservedly win the game. 13 shots to 4, 3.4 xG. We can't really have any complaints. Uh, it was a much closer scoreline than what the chances would suggest. Uh, and we were actually lucky to only lose one nil. So against the big teams, we are still yet to record a victory, but we are still in the top five. And I would accept this position any day of the week, but now eighth place Tottenham are just two points behind us. So the first half, eight, top eight is really close to each other. We just need to keep plugging away and try to get more and more uh, points on the board. And that's it for this episode of the Road to Goal Career Mode. We will play Tottenham away in the next episode. Really looking forward to that as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.